Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today a quick video on how I fixed a power off issue on my Epson 5050UB. This is a issue that I've tested out for the last couple months and since I found the correct way to fix it, it has worked flawlessly ever since then. So my testing period's done. When I built my theater, I ended up finding a used Logitech Harmony system. Most of you are probably aware if you're watching this video that that Logitech Harmony Hub product is no longer available for sale and the support for it's pretty much gone as well as far as I understand. If you can find them, they still work. I plan on using mine as long as I can until it either quits working. Right now it's working flawlessly and I can control my whole setup with it. So the issue I had was I would set up an activity so you push one button. For example, I have two activities set up right now. One is watch streaming, which turns everything on and powers up the NVIDIA Shield Pro and switches to that input and I'm ready to go. The other is watch a disc, which turns everything on, adds the Blu-ray player instead of the NVIDIA Pro. The problem I had was when I would push the power off button, it's supposed to turn everything off that it turned on. However, the projector wouldn't turn off. No matter what I did, no matter what order I would put the power button, I messed with different delays, different signal lengths, so it would push the power off button from five seconds to like 20 seconds, and it just wouldn't matter. It wouldn't turn the projector off. So I found this, the fix for it, and I'm gonna share that with you here, but a quick review of how my system is set up, just so you know. So I'm sitting in my seats. You can clearly see, here's the screen in front of me. The projector obviously is in the, the box behind me. It's a standard Epson 5050UB, nothing special there. Behind this door is my rack. So the hub itself sits right up here on top. And then the, the charging dock for the remote. Basically, the, the hub sends its signal, it bounces right off of this wall and back to the rack. And I can control everything from the Denon receiver, the Panasonic Blu-ray player. I can't control the Behringer because that is a manual push button but all the way down to the Onkyo receiver that I'm using for my base shakers. It all works flawlessly. The, the NVIDIA Shield sits right up here on top as well. How I control the projector is with one of these little IR eyes. And there's one that goes through the wall and it sits right here on top of my right main speaker. That remote IR eye will aim and control the projector on and off, which is pretty much all I use it for in my setup. So that's how my system is set up. Let me show you what it looks like on the remote, if you're familiar with these activities or not. On the remote, there's two options, activities or devices. If you jump over to the devices tab, you can select an individual device and control it. So if I wanna go to my Denon receiver, I can go to setup and the screen will go to the setup menu and this is where I can control the Denon receiver individually. So any of the, the products that I have set up can be individually controlled with the devices tab. Now the activities tab is kind of your go-to. It's just a, a one button press. And like I said, I have the watch streaming and the watch disc. So at this point, I've already clicked on watch streaming. That's why it's highlighted. Everything is turned on. And if I wanted to, I could just push the little power button right there and everything should go off when it's working properly. So that's kind of how the remote is set up, which makes it super easy because then all you have to do is turn it on You've got your volume buttons and you can set up any of these buttons to do whatever you want. The volume button here I have for my main volume on the Denon receiver. The plus and minus at the very bottom here, I have set up to control the bass shaker receiver. So if I want more input from the bass shakers, I simply push up or down respectively for the bass shaker receiver. And then again with the, the red and the green button, if I don't wanna use the bass shakers at all, the red button turns that Onkyo receiver off, the green button turns it on. 
If you're watching this video, you're probably pretty familiar with the Logitech system. So what I'm gonna do now is jump into my phone app, or you can use a computer and log into your account that way as well. And that is typically how you're going to set up your activities or add different devices is through the app. You can set up all your different sequences to which device you want powered on first and vice versa if you're turning everything off. So let's jump into the phone app and I'm gonna show you and explain the issue and how I fixed it and how it has successfully worked flawless for me every time turning the Epson 5050 UB off with the activity off button. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the Harmony app and it automatically connected to my Harmony hub. You'll probably recognize this from the remote. And I can actually control the whole system from this app. So if I clicked on one of these two activities, everything would power up as if I was using the remote itself. So I can go to the devices tab, same thing. I can click on an individual device and I can scroll through and, and here's some commands and options for controlling that specific device. If I go into the, the Blu-ray player, here's, here's the remote. But what I wanna show you is back to these activities. So you set these up through this app. And you can see the Edit Activities button below the Watch Streaming and the Watch a Disc. So when I select Edit Activities, now it wants me to select which one I want to edit. So I'll just start with the streaming one at the top. So here's the activity that I set up. So you'll see at the top, edit start sequence. If I click on that, this is what happens when I turn on this activity. You'll see at the top, the Epson projector, and then in little letters below it, it says power on. Under that is the Denon AV receiver, power on. Onkyo AV receiver, power on. NVIDIA game console, power on. And then we go back to the Denon receiver and we change the input, which is the input where the HDMI comes in from the NVIDIA shield into the Denon so that we're seeing the proper input on the projector when I run this activity. So that is the startup procedure. The edit end sequence right below it is how to power everything off. And this is where I was having the issue and this is how I fixed it. So you'll see the very first thing, Epson projector, and the step that fixed the power off was adding in a blank, and that is it. No delays, no weird changing of the power signal to certain seconds or lengths, simply adding the blank before the power off fixed the issue, and it has worked flawlessly ever since. You can see the rest of the steps are just turning off all the other items that were previously turned on by running this activity. But to show you how to add this, you can add a step. Your first option is a device. So when you click on that, here's my devices. I'll select my projector, the command. Here's all the different commands of what you can do to your projector. But at the very top, third one down is blank. So you simply select the blank, and if I add this step by clicking the right arrow in the upper right corner, now you'll see I have two blanks at the very top of this activity. So that is how you add the blank step and then put that right before your projector power off command. You don't have to add any delays or anything else at all. Simply add one blank step and then power off and it will work perfectly every single time you turn off the activity, the projector turns off like it's supposed to. So here's a quick demonstration. I've got my remote right here. Watch streaming has already been activated. It is highlighted and there's the power button in the left. My projector is on as you can see. And in this case, I have the Denon receiver on. The Nvidia shield is on. There's the power. And my Onkyo receiver for the base shakers are on. So we will simply push the little power button up here next to watch streaming and when I do that projector turns off and our Denon is off our Nvidia shield is off 
and my Onkyo receivers off. So that's how I fixed this issue. I hope this helps somebody else. I had to search a long time digging on Google searches before I finally found someone else that came up with this fix. I can't take credit for this fix on my own and I don't remember exactly where I found it. It's been a couple months, like I said, since I've been testing this out and I wanted to make sure that I continued to work flawlessly and not have any more issues where it wasn't turning the projector off. Maybe there's other projectors that are having the same issue, I'm not sure. This worked for me and this is how I fixed it. I really hope this can help somebody else like it did for me. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below if you have any questions about this. Thanks for watching as always and we'll see you in the next one.